Well, guys, don't think this is a luxury blazing summer day. It's not. We had a horrendous storm with 70 mile an hour winds. I'm down here at Watch at Marina, Somerset, going out with Tomo aboard his brand new boat. It's big, it's beautiful. It's got to be the best one in town. Let's see if we can get out there and catch something. So one of the benefits you've got is this huge deck up here. Look, there's nobody up here. And I've got an uptidy rod reel. I've got braids. I always ask the skipper about braid where you're going to cast. But you see my rig, look. Grip ladder, put a slightly longer boom on there. I'm guessing about a four foot trace and a panel squid there. And I'm going to send it out. Now the other way to cast this, if you've got less space in the boat, is to put the bottom hook, this is more for beginners, over there. It'll probably disengage in the cast, but you can see that just hanging there. I mean, this, this sun is just unbelievable. It's cold, but here we go, here we go. Well up tide, it disengages. Right, the big thing is to let a belly of line go round there. It's just going sinking, sinking, sinking all the time like this. Sinking and sinking. It's on the bottom now. Don't tighten up now. I let a belly of line go down there. And I'm going to be clear with the guys on the stern, hopefully. What's happening, the tide's pushing on that belly of the line and it's pulling those grip leads in. If I tighten up now, the grip leads will be across the tide and they might trip out. So this way, I'm feeding out, trying to get the line. Oh, look at that brown cloud coming out. It's not quite a name on it. Ton of space on the boat like this size. Still not, I'm still letting the line out. About there. In the holder it goes. And that's although although you can see perhaps the line is just there it should stay up there the bait and that should be away from everybody else yeah there's a strap hill Another bite on the rod here, just there. Could might be small fish. Well, that one's a lot closer to the boat. Because this one's further up here, it's out of everybody's way. Hopefully, you don't get tangled. This one's going. You see how it's clipped up there? There it goes. Disengages. And it's all nice and clear. Well, we come down below the bay here, guys. I've got a fish banging away. I've got a big belly of line out. I think I might have missed, there might be some dogs around. Oh, I don't think there's anything there. You never know that when you get the lion ties, probably a dogfish. It is. My God, spurred on. On nylon. <laughs> Was it a smoothie? Nice bit of solid rounding 
tackle them. That's so out of season and done bare thinking about, really, does it? Oh, we'll, have a, we'll have a picture of that. Yeah. Just... Should we go, guys, out of season, really? Smooth hound, spring and summer, and autumn fish. But back he goes. Unusual for Graham to get an early fish. Back he goes. And we've got dogfish. We've got another fish on here. And it is as, well, it's not rough, and especially as a boat this size. You see, we come around the headland there into a bit of a bay here. And it's like there's a fish on this one as well. I'm tempted to get this one and really whack it way up here out of everybody's way, to be honest. Take a tour of the boat, and this is the Lorna Dune from Watch It. Look, it's a ton of space. You walk right round, there's Tomo fishing away, and this is Tomo's first fishing, personal fishing trip. He's been working so hard. <laughs> well, he tells us he's been working hard, he's actually been enjoying it. <laughs> I think I'm going to put that one in the corner way over there. I should be able to cast it outside of this one. You see the scenery in here is what they call Bossington which is really good shore fishing in there. Anybody comes down this way. Good uh, good beach fishing there. Yes you can lose a bit of gear like you do on all beaches but that's very very good in here. All along there especially up that bay there. That look a little tweaky there boys a little tweak. Might have missed it. I think if we get a small bait, a small live fish, we've got to bang it down anyway. So is that a good chew? Let me show you. There you know, I hooked it up. If you look, look at that bait, it's been chewed right between the two, so we're going to top that off and make a bigger bait of it. Meantime, I'm watching my other bait up there as well. Hasn't tripped out. I think I'll just top this one off. Goodness. Hey, I just dropped out. Guys, I've got a drop back bite on this one. Look at that rainbow, and it's not a filter, that is a real rainbow. Oh, I've got a good fish here, boys. Wow, this one's whacked on. This one's got the rod whacked over. I figure it's that lucky rainbow. Well, good job we didn't cast that other rod out. Well, he's not kicking or thrashing, boys. I don't know what it is, but he hasn't stripped me out like that last fish. That's one good thing. Soft rod, though, Tom, oh, this one. That's a beautiful rainbow, I have to say, over there. I want to get the fish, but I want to film the rainbow as well. I'm going to come down the back there, just in case he goes around that. Ow. I think it's a ray myself. I'll go right around, boys. I'll come underneath you. Go this. It's got to be a ray, I should think, isn't it? I saw it look like a big bull ass or something. What is that? Oh, a ray, yeah, a ray. Oh, oh, oh. I've got to watch this other line here. He's going to go around the other line. My overall run, I think I'm under time. I think you're under the ray. I can move out the way. No, let me back up. I'll walk him up here a bit.
We want big fish, we don't want them too big, Tomo. Oh, no. Not on this light rod. <laughs> You need longer arms, Craig! <laughs> you got him. Well done. Well, there we go, boys. That's a, a nice blonde there. Pleased with that on that light rod. So it just shows you a bit of uptiding. Works as well as downtiding. Tomo's put us on the fish here for sure at the moment. We've only been here 20 minutes. Let's get him back. There he goes. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to give that a try. The rod I had over there has uh, got a sort of double one. I'm just going to lob a little bit closer. Same principle here. So one's further out and one's in here, but I'm sort of well away from the other guys because I'm on braid there on nylon. I want to try and keep on. I'm on the bottom there. In fact, I can't believe it's that shallow. I felt like someone might have taken that on the way down. And the boys reckon that uh, that one that was spooling that reel out was. Actually, another fish has grabbed a small fish. We think a giant tope or something. Guys, I'm on again. I'll come round the corner out the way, it's quieter. I get a sound. This one's thrashing away. Now, the last one I sort of did think was a ray. I wonder if this one might be a conga. I've got this one down as an eel. But either way, brilliant bit of sport at the moment. Cannot knock it. I'm hoping I haven't got my other line now, otherwise. I think I might have that one, Tomo. Joe, I've only just chucked that one out, so I've got a feeling, if not, you need to do the drag up and bring him in. I'd bring him in anyway with double braid, it might be. Or you, what do you think? You, am I inside of that? I did lob one out and one in. That might be my lead that's gone up around it. This is the fun of braid. Got the conga off, and then uh, when we were untangling the line, Tom, I thought they might be fish on this one as well. And you guys saw me, I just literally cast that one out. It doesn't feel anything at the moment. Yeah? Oh, there's a nice conga, yeah. Let me pull this in. Hey, Craig's got a nice conga here. And he's got the sense to have wire. I'm going up my little corner again, people. There's too many fish here. That's a conga as well. Craig's had a nice conga. One of those things you, you can't you can't get out quick enough. Conga. Some kind of whole mackerel here, people. In the tie, it's uh, sort of, it's not actually a whole mackerel, it's a skeleton, head and guts, and skeleton bait. So I'm guessing a conga. That's about as much as I can give the rod. It'll be a conga, is he? Oh, he's on the top, yeah. The conga in the current. Am I clear of the other line? So I'll walk him up a bit. That's better. Should be inside of my right now, Tomo. Yeah, you're ahead. Not many boats you can walk down like this, is it? Walk backwards and forwards. There he's coming. Get him slowly. I don't like the braid. I use it on the beach wheels and that's what I've got here, but you can bust a fish off so easily with it, you know, when they shake the heads and stuff. Like that. <laughs> Crack and then the lead comes flying back. Just watch that lead. Doesn't go, Tom. No, he's off again. Trying to keep it this way so that if that 
cracks off, we don't have any any nastiness. Blimey, it's a nice big eel, bigger than I thought he was. I suspect the mono might go. Hang on a second, I thought we'll get one more turn. That's a nice one, Tom. Where would he go? Yeah, he's up nearly 20 pounds. He's got a belly, he's been eating something there. Double, double hook up, Craig? No, I just, I just snagged the bottom, Luke. Oh, it's caught in the bottom? Yeah, James, you just grab Craig's other order. I think I have my grip bled tripped out here, people. I'm pretty sure. Let me wind down, see if there's anything there. We've got to wind the belly out of the line, and indeed, we've got a fish on. That's a good fish, too. So you've got to wind the belly out of the line first. Probably a small eel, but you never know. I missed another good fish just now. No, he's not big. Little eel or something, is it? I don't know. Yeah, a small. Just a small little boot lace. When does a boot lace turn into a strap? Thanks, Tomo. Oh, there's a gen <laughs> officer and a gentleman unhooked himself. Thank you. But you can see there, guys, how the homemade lead trips out there. Even better, I've got some squid left. I'm halfway through the sandwich and got Craig's, Craig's on one. Yours come off. And yet another conger eel. moved down for a last little session below watch it marina actually moved down in the bay down here one last go on shallow water trying to find a codling might be thornback ray apparently yeah we've got thornback this time we just moved down on one of tomo's other marks you can see it's covered in mud on the bottom isn't he Jumped off, did he? Yeah. You reckon that was a cord, yeah, Tom? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Squid or lug or what was that on? 
Oh, yeah, a bit of both, yeah. Black and squid. Do you have two on there, Craig? Uh, yeah, two of those. The old skin of the last one, I've kept it on there because there's a bit of juice in there. And then a fresh one as well. A couple, couple of fresh ones. Get him on this one. What are you gonna to top off with? Just a squid head. Put a squid head on the top there. Looks so, like a little chunk for them. Yeah, it's just a little bait. No, come on. Snake. Same squid I've had for about three hours. <laughs> it's got most of Craig. <laughs> it's got most of Craig's elasticated thread on it. Bait thread. <laughs> Could be a bait beautiful. management then. But still plenty of fish here. We're all waiting expectantly with the net there. Adam, how big this year, Tomo? 16 pound 15. Nice condition. Nice Classic Bristol Channel codling, really. And another species for the day. We had so much rain last night, I could almost float my boat because I got my marina here, but the marina has actually burst its banks. There's my house, and there's the water level that's groundwater. Everything I had to move the bins away, look, it's absolutely over here, is a, is a well over under there. It's overflowed and burst right across here. And my main well, which is here, you can see. 
It's that man again. Hi, hi. What's on your head? It's well over that pipe. Now, if you look back on the old vlogs I did, the video um, the vlogs I've done, and look back to earlier in the year when I had it as low as I've ever known. Look what it's come up to. That's 32, that is now over the pipe. That there is 33 feet deep. That's the level of the water. That's the level of the house. My house is floating, but more strange, I've just had a walk across one of our local golf courses and I've seen a mass extinction on a scale I've never seen before. I'm gonna show you quickly. So up here, oh, a bit of a walk on the golf course, walking across with the wife. We go, my God, look at this lot. A mass extinction of worms, the like of which I have never seen. And there might be a bit of wind in the mic. Can you see those down there? They're all great big lobworms. They are absolutely, look. My goodness me. This thing, this worm has got to be close to a foot long. You can see that there, at least, at least a foot long. What a cracking bait that would make. And look here, absolutely acres. I mean, I'm not talking hundreds. I'm not even sure if it's thousands or tens of thousands. They are everywhere, everywhere. Look at this lot here. How many are there, people? Well, I say how many are there? I'm not about to count them. Obviously, I'm not about to count them. This one is just a boa constrictor. They haven't been dead that long, I guess. Look at the size of them. Unbelievable. What do I want to know? What's caused this mass extinction of absolutely tens of thousands of lobworms? I cannot tell you how many are here. It's absolutely plague proportions and a terrible waste of good chub bait. Anybody out there, scientists, is it acid rain? We've had a lot of rain, I don't know. It's not the same in my garden. But up here, there's plenty. Where we will doubtless gauge by my attire. It's horrible out there. I'm in the tackle shack. I was due to go boat fishing at the Bristol Channel tomorrow. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> Nothing's happening, trust me. It's a big named storm that's coming in. Scotland's got snow. The northeast of England's got gallons of rain. We've got rain and wait for this 70 mile an hour winds due. So the only place I can come in here, I've got the G stove going. It's nice and toasty. I'm not going to cook anything in the oven, but it's up to about over 180, I think, there. And of course, now I realise I can open that oven door as well and get even more heat out of it. It's toasty in there now. Here's the story, guys. Mike now moved down to Somerset, and the wife and daughter said, let's clear all his room, his little pad out upstairs. So they've cleared all his stuff out. We've wheeled it down to Somerset so he can sort it out. But he's got some good pictures. And I said, well, we got rid of loads and loads like you do, you get rid of pictures. So people have them on their phones now, don't they, pictures? But, you know, we've got these ones, so I thought, I'm not throwing them away, I'll put them up in the tackle shack. So we've got things like, like one there. That's the very, very first time we used High Sea Drifter. I think I drove 1,500 miles towing it. We took it to Ireland within a matter of days of having it, came back, slept for one night up here, I think we just drove it, dragged it all the way to Boscastle, shark fishing, um, and there we are, that's in Boscastle Harbour. A very young Mike and a very brightly coloured boat. 
other fishy head, I'll show you these now anyway. That was Mike with a big Dorado. Do you know? I don't even know what that was called. Probably Florida Keys. A young, good looking man. He's nearly as good looking as his old man. He used to come out there fishing with me. Uh, there he goes, now shark. I don't know. Probably tagged it. He was fishing when he was eight. He actually had, wait for this, he had the the junior record, we could have claimed it, and there were three of us witnessing a junior record of 180 pound lemon shark. But because you've got to kill the fish to claim it, so we weren't up for that. But it was a massive lemon shark, wait for this, at the age of eight years old. The story was, I was out with him, another guy with a flats boat, we had two flats, boat, we, flats boats that we had out, down the Keys, out of Isla Mirada. Hook this big shark right at the end of the day. Five o'clock pack up time, it was it was literally five to five. We fought it to the boat. I was hanging on to him most of the time because it would wheel him over the side. And then I took a step backwards, slipped on fish guts or something on the bottom of the boat. <laughs> it was funny really. It's not funny at the time, but it was funny now. Slipped and fell over, let go of Mike, who's pointing the right again, Dad! Worse. I, as I fell down, I banged the throttle into forwards because we had it in slow gear following the shark. <laughs> so, so we shot forward, it nearly went over the side. Very, very lucky. And then we got another guy on a boat that came over, tied alongside us, and we got the picture. It made the national press. Uh, and we actually went up on TV as well. There's another one that he had. I'm going to put them up here. So these are following fishing. Lovely blue sky. We certainly haven't got that today, guys. That's a permit. That was caught, uh, if memory serves me correctly, it was aboard, I think it was Greg Eklund, was it, who ran the Cloud, Cloud Nine out of Bob Mary's Marina. A nice permit, really good. And that day, a guy came out with us, a photographer. He lost a permit. We were in excess of 50 pounds over the wreck. I've never seen a reel, and this is the truth, I've never seen a reel spooled down to the stub. Point at it, bang, and that was like 30 pound line. That was on our first trip out, as well aboard High Sea Drifter. On that, a legendary trip to Ireland, we towed it all the way over there. First trip out, we had two tonne up skate, biggest 140 pounds, I think. This one was, yeah, that's the one we got it in the boat. Mike's first uh, big skate. And when you get these big skate in the boat, it's one thing, but in your small boat like this, getting them out is something else. A huge fish. But well, we've had, I think, three fish over 100, well, we had loads of fish over 100 pounds in Icy Drifter, but that was, you know, our first fish over 100 pounds, one of the first time trying within a matter of days. That's going to be a glary one to look at. It's a night shot. Now, it was done years ago. It was about 140 pound tarpon we caught in a rainstorm in the middle of the night. I've actually got tarpon tags, which enable you to tag them as well. But that's a huge fish, that's another nice fish. So you can see why I don't really want to dump the pictures, do you? And I've probably lost them, listen, I've probably lost them off the, uh, off the hard drive now. And that was over in Ireland again, where we used to go bass in, inshore bass in there. The most bass, wait for this, I think I had with a guy over there, was, I think it was 30 or 32 bass in a day on live sand hill, with a little bubble float, a small bubble float, just drifting close to the rocks. Other than that, I don't think we've cracked double figures yet, but there's some nice bass over there. Well, there was. Put them all back. Eat one or two if you want. Now, it depends on the rules and regulations in the UK. So anyway, I'm going to put these up. I'm going to dot them around here, guys. Space them around so it helps make it a little bit more colour. And they're going to fade. They get damp, probably. They are going to fade. But listen, it just makes it a little bit more fishy, doesn't it? And then I've got a second job to do as well. the film you can see look the sound in here is not great come on I've been a built it out of engineering crates it's just homemade but the good old tackle shack's been in 13 years now not as the tackle shack uh, as a unit and all this has been done up for those who don't know about it if you look on the early ones you'll see it was a spider infested rat hole I should think but it's all been done up it's going pretty well got to redo some of the ceiling uh, I've got some gaps I'm going to fill out gradually as I, as I find bits of old tackle or something like that to put in here. 
But over there, the sun in the winter goes down very low. It goes up in a low arc, and I get a light patch come through here, and it shows up very white. The camera doesn't really read that too well. So I've got, which wifey got at our charity shop, one of these blinds. But I don't know whether you're able to cut them down. I'm thinking of putting it over that window just so I could drop it down, lower it, and just even the light out in here. I think I'm going to take it out and have a look at it. Even when it's a non fishing day, people, I get so bored, I've just got to do something. I tell you one thing I do hate, I hate, hate putting blinds up as any of you other DIYers have you had trouble. Now I've got to cut all that so I'm not going to use that one. That means the metal at the top. All you dark DIYers out there will know what goes across a window when you want to put it inside a blind, inside the reveal to keep it neat and tidy. That's right, to support that structurally, it has to have a support. It generally would be what they call a catnick lintel, which is metal. Not too good for fixing, it's not for, you know, for drills going in there. Or usually the old fashioned concrete, reinforced concrete lintel. Oh, lovely for the ears with a hammer drill trying to get in there. So I absolutely hate it on my properties when I have to put blinds up. Much better to put the batten on the outside, screw to that, because a lot of people wouldn't need the weather view. Well, I think we'll pass on this. I wonder if the white wife might have a small piece of curtain I could put up there as well. I'll put that across. But a job I did do in the summer, which was one of you guys out there commented, I had trouble with my weather vane turning. Because obviously I'm a fisherman, I'm always looking at the weather. Here we're pretty well exposed to west, southwest, and east, and east, shelter from a northerly. My weather vane wasn't going around, and then somebody said, I mean, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. He said, get yourself a stainless ball bearing, Graham. Take the weather vane off. A little bit of grease or oil on there. Put the ball bearing over the top or in the tube so it goes back over. And it swivels because you've got a reduced area of friction there. You want to see how it works? Have a look at this. And thank you for the guy that suggested it. I've come into the workshop. Lo and behold, what do I find? Yes, some ball bearings. So. I'm going to get up on the roof again before the storm comes and it gets wet and see if I've got one of these ball bearings that will actually fit in that centre shaft that supports my weather vane. <sighs> I don't need to know the weather though, do I? Because I've just said the storm's coming. So I've got my trusty ancient oil can. I've got an assortment of ball bearings, which I was going to use in a catapult and be really naughty firing them around, but glad I kept them now. It's up the ladder. Oh, my dear. Up we go, on to, held by one and a half inches of ladder. Ah, you've got to live dangerously, all that health and safety rubbish. Kids, don't climb all over roofs, it's not good. Oh, oh. Let me uh, climb, I'm climbing, climbing, all the way to the top of the world. There's my chimney. Push that clip back up there. Now, let's get over here, right on the edge. I can feel the wind picking up already up here, people. And, oh, I don't like it near the edge too much. Look, it is spinning. There's no question it's spinning. And I've got this set up with a compass, so it's, I know it's right. But I'm gonna take it off, say la voila. And there is where the ball is going to rest. The ball bearing be right on the top here. Let's have a little looky, see if this guy's right. It's best I find to keep the wife happy is to do all these little jobs. This isn't one for her, it's one for me. All the little jobs first, keep the ladies happy, and then you can shoot off. It looks like I've got an assortment of sizes. Now, let's have a little look. Oh, that's going to be just right. That's a bit bigger. I'm going to go for that bigger one. I never even thought of this. As soon as the guy told us in the comments page, put a ball bearing up there. I'm going to put those straight in my pocket. You never know when you want a ball bearing. So what he's suggesting is this. I drop this ball bearing down in there, and instead of that flat plate just there, resting on there, scoring around the edge, this ball will be on the top and that'll have less contact surface area. We're going to hopefully get some oil in there. 
oil's in. Fingers crossed, people. It's going to drop out, Graham. Don't do it that way. I just, if I turned it up the other way, it's going to drop out. So if I hold the ball on the top and then do it that way, and the oil spins. Oh, wow, look at that. That spins beautifully. Get that bird muck off there. We'll be having a sandwich after that. And that's what I intend doing tomorrow, guys. That's right, fishing. Well, actually, the day after tomorrow, I've got accountancy to do. And then I'm going to be in this position with that on the end. Next job. Right, there we go, people. That's done the job. That's just the wife suggested using this because it's neck curtain, it's an old neck curtain. We had to cut it off. I've tied it at the top. Look, it's got to be a fishing line. I couldn't find a couple of wire, and all this is free. A couple of nails, I can slide it back here, and then when I'm filming, the sun comes around low in the winter, I don't get that white patch glaring at me. I can put this across. The only time it might get really bright is when the spark gets out of here. Whoosh, up we go. But there you go. And of course, all the women, all the females watching again, oh, and they're so cute, it's so homely. It's the filming, it's the filming people. But that is just enough. I could make it really twee, how about that? That is twee if I put that back. That's what they do ladies, and they have a little tie there. I might do that guys. Tuck that behind there, I've made a loop of fishing line in the end. And, oh yes, I think that looks pretty neat guys. It won't be long before I have to get a cleaner in here as well. Right, using that fishing lines, actually, give me another little tip I've got to tell you people about. Join me in the office. Now, I use bits of fishing line for anything from tying up the beans in the summer, whatever. I just use anything like 50 pound. This is my 50 pound spool of line, spare line. And I will put it on the reel, which brought me to the idea of do you guys know about reversing line? I mean, just picture this. You go and buy a fishing reel, you fill up with line. Let's say it takes, it's a spinning reel, it takes three, 350 yards of line. Are you casting 350 yards of line? So most of that line is never ever going to see the light of day. And what normally breaks down monofilament, and that's what I'm talking about at the moment, is sunlight. So generally, if you keep it in a garage, keep it cool, keep it in a shed, it lasts a long time. It's only the sunlight, really. I think it's the UV rays that actually break it down. Somebody out there with a the keyboard, tell us, is it the UV breaks? Does it break down mono line? I think it is, yes. But what you can do, and I do this, I reverse it. So I take, here's the fishing reel, we'll say, the same for multipliers, exactly the same. Casting or boat fishing, if you fill up with 600 yards of 50 pound line, my goodness me, want to be some fish in England to take 600 yards of line now, you probably barely use 150 yards of line. So in other words, you've got 400 good line. I reverse it. This is how I reverse my fishing lines. It saves me buying. So using this drill, you can see, keep it on slow. You don't really have to worry about laying it too level or anything like that. I'll go up here, make sure it doesn't go around the spindle here. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh. oh my goodness, just like being at school again in the sack race. I'm going to take a big loop around here to keep it tight and then all the way back down so you can see I'm filling it up there and just continue doing this under an even tension and reverse that line. So easy, big spool, bolt through the middle, washers, spacers there. Look at this. I can even go backwards. So I stopped for a breather here. If you just see there, you can see it's very, very dark green. That's the original colour of it. When you're using it, it's going backwards and forwards through the rod guides, the rings, it wears off the colour. But you can see that has never seen the light of day, as per new.
Oh dear boys, the wife's not going to like that. Neither are the birds. This is what you call a little bit too much pressure on the drill. Oopsie. Anyone for Niger seed? I don't know if you can see this guys. That's the original underneath the spool, never seen the light of day, dark green. And I've tried to wind the top that I've been using, so I'm getting near the end now. On the left hand side, look, hopefully, you can see the difference in the colour color between here, unused, and there, used. So this good stuff's then going to be on the top of the spool, and I've got probably another 23 years of fishing line to use before I have to go in a tackle shop. I've now joined the braid to the back end of the mono. All I'm going to do now is the bolt which I had the drill on, I'm just going to release that bolt. Okay. Just a little bit, just a tad like that. Then that enables me to put it in the vise. Look, this is just my way of doing it, people. This is just how I'm doing it, just like this. Nip it there. Bring my reel around here. Bring my reel around here. And you'll see that now is free to revolve. Like that. And obviously I'm going to hold this to put a bit of pressure on it, but I'm just showing you this because it's difficult to do with a camera on your head. Hands, winding, spools, it's all quite a bit much. But you can see I'm reversing it. I'm putting the braid that was on the top of the reel here, now put it on the bottom where it will never see the light of day again. And then I'll have some brand new stuff on the outside, hopefully. This might take me some time. And there we go, all filled up, just probably a tad overfilled, but at least I'm level with that lip and I still got a little bit of silver there showing for the uh, lip of the spool to actually cast better. And more important, there you can see, it's all brand new line. Another totally awesome tip for you guys to play with, reverse your fishing line, save money. We'll see you again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell also Mike's TA Outdoors, which has really picked up, it's really going pretty well up. Well, it's just, every time we put a film up, he's, he's doing some good numbers on it. So we must be doing something right between us, the good old father and son duo. We'll see you next time. A little bit of tackle shake, and I hope the weather goes through, a little bit of fishing. See you later.